so the surgical procedure creates a level of scarring. The second consequence of major surgery is the destruction of vascular planes. So the, the vascularity of that area is also compromised initially. That's what actually what I wanted to ask you about because as you know, breast tissue receives its vascular supply through the rib cage, drains yes. into the axilla. I, I didn't mean to disturb you, but is there, do we do any uh, pre-operative uh, work maybe to open up the rib cage fascially to maybe allow more uh, blood into the area? And then I guess uh, obviously if the lymph nodes have been removed, you can't really work too much in the axilla to, to allow the drainage. What would happen there? Your problem is, yes, the supply is from medial mm -hmm. and those vessels are actually cut and sealed. Oh, boy. So no matter how much you open this up pre-surgery, the supply is cut to give you a bloodless field to work on the outside. Wow. So that is one way that they can create a bloodless field to get a better um, dissection out of the system. But then once the surgery is over, it's still a bloodless field? It's still during, a bloodless field. During recuperation. But one good thing about the body is the body is a clever machine. It forms new blood vessels. Right. It forms a peripheral circulation, but it's always going to be a slightly compromised um, circulation. And what you've just mentioned about the lymphatics that's been compromised in here, yes, the lymphatics have been, or the lymph nodes have been cut out, but the lymph vessels leading into it is intact. And what then happens, and I don't have specific proof for this, but my feeling is that this area heals with a scar, which is fibrotic tissue, which will also then limit the available drainage site right there because of scarring. So my lymphatic drainage massage and therapy afterwards definitely needs to take into consideration extensive scarring but not exclude you from going there because that area needs gentle early mobilization without upsetting the layers that they've, that they've worked on here. Later on, and I normally advise that um, unless you really know what you're doing, don't really go there for the first month. Let them settle down. It's been big, major surgery. Don't get them exercising too early because that's another problem. Wound healing. The first seven days is the inflammatory phase three to seven. In that phase, your body is stimulating the um, fibroblasts to lay down collagen. So if I'm too aggressive initially, either by my physical therapy, my manual therapy, or my exercise prescription, because some of these ladies are just going to prove to the world that they are not going to be they're not going to let this thing get to them. So I am going to have my arm up there within a week. So those are the dangerous ones. Because they prolong the inflammatory phase, which is a bigger lay down of scar tissue in the long term, which leads indirectly to more scarring. So I'm a very lazy practitioner initially. Let the system settle. Then, Wow, the system responds to strain. And the best strain you can put into the system is the manual therapy strain. Not because I want to give this person a massage, but the techniques taught in massage puts a strain into the system, which is very specific towards where the healing needs to go. And if you can create your touch well, you can be quite beneficial or effective in getting an earlier resolution of scarring tightness with a better end result functional. Now there are many schools of thought on this. Early mobilization towards late mobilization. It's all in the literature. Early exercises as opposed to delayed exercises. 
early therapeutic intervention on a manual side versus later intervention. The medical literature is full of comparisons. And the nice thing about all of this is, by the time they get to two years down the line, we all have the same end result anyway. So, where do we really start? My feeling is manually early on because of quality of life. If I have to sit with my tight shoulder for a year, but I can have it resolved in three months, why should I have another nine months of a sore tight shoulder? Okay, let's carry on with the restrictions that you find and then how you treat them. The following level of surgery is obviously your tissue preserving surgery which basically only damages the breast tissue, but there's a second scar where they may then need to clear the axilla. After that, you also get virtually the same kinds of restrictions. And I've often asked myself, why do tissue preserving procedures give me the same bad end results as full radical mastectomies? And I don't know. But that's an observation. The areas of dominant st structural tightness that I find is first of all, most ladies by the time they come for therapy has limited shoulder movements. There are quite a few other limitations and um, problems that they encounter, but let's stick to one, which is limited shoulder elevation. Now my shoulder elevation is quite um, my shoulder elevation needs decent and unrestricted tissue gliding on my entire chest wall, inner arm, and rib cage in order to allow me to get up there. So what we have found are three dominant areas of restricted tissue gliding and scarring post mastectomy. The first scarring came directly from where the surgery, surgical site of um, surgery was. The second restriction that I often find is in the axilla and where the axillary clearance was done. The third site, I mentioned the drain sites. Now those are well documented in all the literature as restrictive sites. But what I started finding is another area of tissue restriction that's got nothing to do with the surgery and that has never been documented. And that is in 50% of the ladies that we saw over the last year with modified radical mastectomies and shoulder restrictions had a specific area of tissue tightness behind the shoulder over the triceps long head, teres major, posterior deltoid area. Now that was picked up by purely feeling for tissue restrictions on a shearing level. And being from a normal musculoskeletal background in rehabilitating shoulder injuries in sportsmen, I find the same restrictions in shoulder problems that come off sports fields and out of my normal population also there. So why should a breast cancer lady have one as well? I don't fully know. But I find them and they interfere with function. So my therapy then has to take me into specifically two areas. The one is the direct one where we've got the scarring. My tissue approach on that is purely to restore tissue glide. You start out very gently, very superficial, either by using a direct approach into the tissue or the scarring, or by using a stretching technique, taking the stretch into the system and just holding, which is Again, almost a tissue shear, tissue pull, 